What is good? We're back. The, the length new- of my fingernails are not is not good. <laughs> the new year is basically upon us, baby. Flip those calendars over, and the new NFL year is, has started. The draft has come and gone, and we are ready to roll. Where's it at? Where's it at? Ready to roll. roll. I think I hit two at the same time. Man, off to a bad start. We're almost ready to roll. We're almost ready. All right, so here we are. We've got a mock draft. We've thrown it out to the public because we didn't want to just do it right off the rip. We want to see where the public was at, and we're going to review this bad Larry. He said right off the rip. There's one. If Bang. you guys see that symbol, you got to drink. Okay? It's a trigger <laughs> word. So, I don't know how much the first round has necessarily changed. There may have been a slight shuffling and a little bit of reordering, mostly on the back half of this thing, but not too much. And then I think in the second half, we, we see some big changes and some big movements. So, right off the rip. <laughs> Caleb Williams 1-1, one, one. Marv Harrison 1-2, Malik Neighbors 1-3, Drake May 1-4, one, 1-5, one, Jaden Daniels, Roma Dunze 1-6, and Brock Bowers 1-7, and we can now extend that to 1-8 and J.J. McCarthy, right? He went so fast. So, through, flew through all those picks. You can chop up those first six however you want and argue until you're blue in the face. Really don't care how you do it. I like it one way. You like it another way. That's what makes this fantasy thing work, right? I would go Caleb, Marv, May, Daniels, Neighbors, Adunze, and then I think the first real question, and again, if you don't like that order, whatever, there's do what you want. But now we've come to a question where this was always Bowers at 1-7, and now I, I think... I think that we've moved to maybe J.J. McCarthy now maybe at 1-7 and Bowers at 1-8 on the early digestion of landing spots here. McCarthy has landed in a spot that is seemingly very comfortable. And right. Brock, ba- Brock Bowers has landed in a spot that is uncomfortable could be a little could be a little weird right. uh, you know yeah. we don't there's a lot of questionable questions about what's going to go on there offensively how they're going to deploy things who's going to be throwing the football and i don't like to completely let that make my decision in dynasty because this is dynasty and it's long term right 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 this time next year the raiders could be having a great situation a great quarterback an offense that everybody wants to buy into but has has jj mccarthy usurped Bowers, and we're talking 1.5 premium. I think if we're talking two, Bowers still stays safe. It's a good asset. I'm not saying that there's this big tier break yet. I think there's a t- big, decent tier break as we get to the next pick after this. Um, the first real major one, I, yeah. I think. How about McCarthy Bowers for you, Big D? Yeah, I mean, I um, I think that I'm I'm more on the McCarthy side now just because of, uh, you know, the JJ to JJ connection, you know, the weapons that he's got, right. Addison, JJ, Hawk. I mean, uh, you know, I, I, I think he'll probably sit in the beginning. I mean, that's what I would guess is that they right. probably would bring Darnold in and let JJ adjust a little bit. But with this draft capital in the long run, it's it's feels, draft capital. Uh, feels like it's going to be a um, I mean, it feels like it's going to be a matter of time right before JJ takes the reins with the Bauer side. It's like. Okay, you know, great player. He's gonna. He's definitely gonna get his his uh, his his stuff. But like Gardner and Aiden right now aren't. Gardner's notorious for um, targeting wide receivers, and I, he's the one that I think will win out over Aiden O'Connell. And really, really seemingly like sticking to just targeting the shit out of, of one ish yeah, guy. One one ish guy exactly. And and of course, you still have Devonte Adams there, so mm-hmm. that one ish guy is pretty easy to, to, right. to determine, right? Um, and I believe Jacoby Myers is still there, so there's talent there. When I say all that, just like you kind of interluded us into it, is like. That's not going to be the long-term solution at their quarterback position. That mm-hmm. offense is going to change. There's going to be adjustments. So I still think he's a very valuable pick. I just think like right out of the gate, I think McCarthy to me has more of the uh, obvious upside, I guess is a better way to say it. Right. Both I think are, are fairly insulated picks. Whether McCarthy plays or not right away, I don't really care. Right. I'm okay with really whatever they want to do. I don't mind Sam Darnold playing a third of the season, half the season, hell, even most of the season. Really doesn't matter to me. I still like everything that's in uh, Minnesota. This gives you a, a great opportunity to give Justin Jefferson all the money he wants, uh, make him real happy, and then build a relationship between him and JJ 
through the long term. You got Addison, you See. got Hawkinson, you have Aaron Jones now for a season. Uh, it's just it's it's a really really good ecosystem to be going into. JJ McCarthy, uh, by and all intents and purposes, you have uh, also a very good head coach schemer, uh, a quarterback himself. So you would think that he'd be able to really massage JJ and do exactly what he wants him to be, blank canvas. Whereas you know Kirk Kirk had some of his best years uh in in minnesota there but um you get that rookie contract you can do a lot of different things plus it's you know now now you got your guy that you can mold into doing what you want to do so i i I think uh, for me jj has as of today the saturday of the nfl draft um i i've put jj over bowers i believe unless it's two point premium um you think uh JJ, the other JJ, Justin Jefferson, is staying. You think he's this yeah, is good I, enough for him? For sure. I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't see why not. Like, they, they can pay him the bag. They can give him all the money that he wants because you have the luxury of now having a rookie quarterback. Your other wide receivers, a second year player. You, you've paid Hawkinson, I believe, um, and you're not paying Aaron Jones a ton, right? Um, so you're you're good to go, man. You're you're in a good position. They they kind of were in a slight little re- rebuild, it seems. Um, this mm-hmm. is a perfect scenario to kind of do that with, and then let JJ take the reins at some point. And maybe it's right off the rip, but <laughs> um, maybe it's not. Maybe maybe it is a little a little bit of a runway into what's the opposite of off the rip? Letting him um, um, on the tear. No, sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I exactly. He he could win out in camp. I mean, sure. you know, um, I think the heart that he was one of the hardest people to evaluate pre-draft, just because of all the things that everyone's already talked about. Not a lot of tape. Didn't need to throw much. Wasn't right. need to utilize that much. But who knows? I mean, you put him in a situation where he's competitive. Uh, he's coming into that, uh, you know, in into Minnesota, and by the end of camp, um, by the end of preseason. Um, he could he could very well be the starter. He could easily uh, outperform um, Darnold. Yeah. Uh, Darnold, or he he might not. Who knows? Or or they may even say like right now, um, you know, we're gonna go in with the veteran. Right. And, it really doesn't matter exactly what you do here. You could be awesome, but we're still we're gonna go into the yeah. first few games and let Sam do his thing. Yeah. For Bowers though, and did make a good point, and in a higher premium. Um, or, or an extraordinary premium or even a start two tight end mm-hmm. are you is Bowers is this the ceiling for Bowers at one seven or would you bump him up above neighbors and uh Dunze? in in two I, I would probably put those guys in the same tier right now I probably have them a tier below so okay. I'd, it'd be kind of even for me I'd, I'd be pretty flexible on that you could you could push him in two point you could push him maybe ahead of of nah i, th- I think we're kind of even there i don't i don't feel strongly one way or another but yeah uh just again situations change and I, I don't like to get caught up in it and i don't like to have somebody argue with me about you know one year of of not having a quarterback but who knows uh r- but right now i know that roma dunze is tied to potentially an awesome quarterback and, and you know malik neighbors who knows we at least he has somebody that you feel probably can get it done yeah at least facilitate one guy's uh good <laughs> fantasy ceiling maybe y'all feel that way I don't know. <laughs> yeah well daniel, I mean, jones. I'm scaled. daniel jones baby you know he's, he's so you, you can make that argument as well but sure i, I think i think i'd probably I, scale those as about i think there's even. enough question marks with uh adunze and neighbors in their situation to justify that being a tier if you're in those higher premiums yeah. or a start that, to that's fair um, each one has a question yeah mark. there's questions going in so I, I think i think it's easy enough but i don't think it's worth the the time of day to to discuss oh no no you're absolutely wrong right. if you have this one rated yeah. one and this one three yeah it's they're just way too close for me right probably taking the wide receiver just gotta okay. default to the wide receiver sure i ham, mean two point two point sandwich over there two point premium i'll, I'll load up on tight ends all day long give yeah. me them all um so yeah. All right. Uh, at one at one nine, we got Lad McConkey. At one eight or or uh, one ten, we have Brian Thomas. At one eleven, we have Xavier Worthy, and at one twelve, we have Michael Penix. Uh, at one oh nine, Lad McConkey again cannot argue that by any step of the uh, imagination here. I do think that there really isn't any usurping 
I've seen already a few rookie drafts posted on Twitter with Ladd up up in there, up, you know, in, inside that top three receivers. That's silly. Nothing happened to usurp either one of those three blue chip guys. But Ladd lands in a really great situation, a great spot. They passed on the first round wide receiver and neighbors. Uh, and now you have a guy in Ladd who is most likely going to be Justin Jefferson or uh, Justin Herbert's number one target. Right. Uh, in an offense and yeah maybe they only throw it <laughs> 23 times a game or it's not going to be the league high we know that but uh i think the volume can be there for what else is surrounding lad mcconkey and he seems to be kind of a, a big fit of what exactly harbaugh kind of wants to do we've got the protection now we got heart now we got uh mcconkey and now we can kind of run our system run the ball heavy and we can deploy mcconkey in a bunch of different ways i think one nine to me is is not out of bounds at all for for Lad McConkey. Me either. I mean, to me, Brian uh, Thompson, uh, Thomas, geez, and uh, McConkey are are pretty much the same, same, right? I feel I felt better about Brian going in. Was my he was my wide receiver four, right? And uh, Lad was oh he was my wide receiver five. So honestly, both situations right. are are fine to me. I, I don't necessarily like one over the other. I like I think T Law um, in that offense in in Jacksonville need a, a studly uh, one, and I think you know I think Thomas can do that. I think Lad in that offense with Justin Herbert, as you already explained, is is, is good. And I I don't know what the Chargers offense we don't know exactly what the Chargers offense we know it's probably going to be a, a pretty you know run run first focus just with the offensive coordinator and mm -hmm. and that but still point being is that uh, we know that Justin Herbert can can solidify a top you know top 10 wide receiver and not calling that that's what lads going to be right out of the gate but we know that his his arm can do that and so both of those are right there and then worthy um you know, it's it's the Casey Lamps. It's the it's the moonshot. I think he, on a different show, is kind of talking about him being closer to Deshaun Jackson than than John Ross because every you know because of his speed. It's like oh, he's a speed guy, but I think he runs better routes than uh, what some people give him credit for. Um, but but I, I think because of the upside of Patrick Mahomes, Andy Reid. They're all three to me, really. Yeah, uh, I, I want to be more like, no, you're wrong. But they're all three interchangeable to me. I, I, I really feel like, uh, to me, the um, you know, I said Daniel Jones was a winner in the draft. I'll put that on record again. But, but to me, one of the biggest winners of the draft was anyone that was holding a, a competitive team pick, right? The one nine, the one twelve, and even into the early uh, second is really. Just the way the draft went and the way the landing spots gone, we already knew they were going to be valuable. But it was like there yeah. was a lot of like, well, this could happen, this could happen. Now that we have the answer, it's like, well, these. I mean, I'd be happy with, you know, Lad and, um, you know, uh, and and Thomas or Worthy and and um, as my you know as my one going into coming out of. Uh, out, Sorry, not as my one overall, but as my one coming out of this rookie draft for my team, especially mm -hmm. if I'm a competitive team, because more than likely I've got right. I've got the situation to handle that kind of uh, that kind of vul uh, vulnerability. So, right. Yeah, no, I'm I had those three as the next tier of wide receivers coming in. And it, there was a little bit of a question mark after day one, whether Ladd was going to stay in there or not. And I think it worked out and I, there's no reason for me to take him out. I liked him a lot coming in and it, it, it was a really, really sexy landing spot uh, mm -hmm. that, that we got <laughs> that we can't that we, that we got gifted so I can't be upset about that at all so that that's a tier for me of the next uh, wide receivers there so then Michael Penix comes in 112 I had the 111 pick I decided yeah. to let somebody else do my dirty work for me because I was like I don't I don't I don't want to take Michael Penix I'll let somebody else we'll see where other people are gonna take uh, Michael Penix here and obviously he has the draft capital. Yep. We, we talked about that a, a lot, that Knicks and Penix could very well get the capital, and they'd be right in the discussion for the back end of the first. And here we are. I think if you want to make the determination that Knicks is going to be starting right away and that you right. want to take him over Penix, I'm not going to be upset about that. I like, I'm like. i on record as saying I like Penix's ability more than all the other quarterbacks, not named Jane Daniels, Drake May, and Caleb Williams. Yep. 
Um, but we do have a situation where we don't exactly know what the future is going to be. And it seems like it'll be two years before we see Michael Penix play, hopefully. So that for, for Falcons fans, because that means Kirk is playing, you know, pretty well for them. Right. And I mean, you got to be patient with that end of that first round pick. Just take Penix and and sit there with him. You know, well, however long it takes. Much, much like Big D was alluding to when he was he was talking about this, like what the big winner is your back half of the draft of being. Uh, and, and when the combine ended, it was like, all right, one nine, one ten definitely got more valuable because these guys that we're talking about. Right. And here we are. And they all got awesome landing spots. Right. Yeah. Uh, double bonus. Uh, so now the whole back and the quarterbacks got good landing spots and the two running backs that we were concerned that we wanted to get that we thought might get decent capital. Did. did so all that stuff really unfolded for one nine to, to two three two four was right exactly on time kind of where you needed it to be and Penix if you're the 112 111 guy uh, you were in the championship and hopefully you're not like a super old team right and other than that you should be able to have patience and and draft uh, the, the Penix um, for your squad to help you out and I and I love I love Michael Penix just happened to be right on this one Feels good, uh, but we don't, you know, we're not going to dwell on it too much. I'll take my <laughs> Feels shots. so good when he jokes. <laughs> I'll take my shots here and there. Uh, but like I said, it was nice to see somebody else do the lifting there and taking Penix at 112. Then we start the second round. Big D, you were up and, and you went Knicks there. Yeah, I mean, you, you kind of you kind of talked about it already, but Knicks is, you know, I, I the draft capital matters in, in ways and his situation Turned out pretty good by the end of the draft, especially adding a a, a, a happy face in his in his uh, wide receiver room. Uh, mm-hmm. We'll get to that later, but uh, but point being is like he's. I don't know what you think about Sean Payton. I don't know. You know, he's toast, right? He, he's no. done. He's done. He's all right. He's. Um, I want to say Deuce Bigelow, but that's not it. I'll, I'll come back to that. But anyway, point being is that I think Nick's is accurate enough with the the small dump off passes and and how could you be any good with that yards per attempt so low and um and even though he's a duck i mean i don't think he's a horrible quarterback right i definitely think he has some talent in there so i to me it was a pretty relatively easy i mean definitely would have took Penix probably if if he was there um at 2-1 um but if i'm if I earn the 101, right? I'm I'm picking from the one spot in this particular draft. If I earn the 101, I might go Knicks just because I could get the value right away, mm-hmm. right? Like there's you know, it depends on depends on team or whatever, but um Knicks to me just seems like um uh, an e- an easy flyer that I feel safe. It's a, it's a comfortable, you know, it's a it's a cup of hot chocolate now where, you know, maybe before it was like is that hot chocolate going to have a little marshmallow on it, or is it just going to be cold? And yeah, and now it's you know it's got it's got a couple of those a couple of those marshmallows, and it, and it looks all right. So I, I feel I feel okay with Nick's um, moving forward, and just seeing how it, how it comes out. I don't um, I don't know how much competition he's going to have with uh, Zach Wilson. You know, <laughs> who knows? I mean, Zach Wilson could come, and you know, maybe he gets his yeah. It seems like you would have. You know, there will be some sort of competition. Real quick, I mean, you got to get rid of any hot chocolate flavor. You know, can I just have a hot chocolate, not the mint or the caramel or whatever? <laughs> just regular mm-hmm. with marshmallows. Just get rid of all these. Stop. Anyway, your thoughts on Nick's? Uh, yeah, I mean, there there could be some competition between him and him and uh, Zach Wilson. Yeah, and, for and, someone's mom. Instead of coming in here um, oh you give me that suntan lotion no you give me that suntan hey, i'm lotion. a blonde haired guy around a male adult around here they do look kind of similar um <laughs> but uh, inevitably i think nicks wins out this is the guy that that at least uh, if sean payton didn't want he was okay with it enough to have it and when, when you look at how nicks operates and how when nicks operated the best it was exactly what you were saying lower a dot it's death by a thousand paper cuts and then take a shot. Yeah. And now you've tied uh, the guy who he used to take shots with. Yep. And the, the the biggest by far a dot of any receiver on that team when targeted was Troy Franklin. And now he is a Denver Bronco. Right. Stock, a, dot, a dots on the board for just stock down a little um, in general and because of draft capital for Franklin. But for right. Bo Nix, it's nice to have that familiar face. The guy you could take a shot with. Um 
But, you know, Sean Payton, on what you think of him and the way he's gone about his business over the last little bit, he could certainly have put a bad taste in your mouth. I don't think he's forgotten necessarily how to coach. Right. If you can put, you know, somebody who can operate what he wants to do the way he wants to do it. Oh, like a Hall of Famer, Drew Brees? Um, you know, I think I think you could. Well, I mean, Drew Brees wasn't a Hall of Famer until he got a hold of him. So, well, yeah, a bum arm. His well, shoulder. I mean, you know, take it for what it is. But he got a hold of him and turned him into something. Went to a Super Bowl, uh, won a Super Bowl. Yeah, and ha- was a was a competitive team year in year out. Left him in some in some salary cap hell, which right. you know a bit of a jo move and has had some jo off. had some jo moves last year with with Russell Wilson. Whether I, I don't really like Russell either, but I don't really love the optics of how that was from the outside looking in, but it seems like Bo Nix is somebody he could certainly operate and do what he wants with. So I, I thought it was, you know, a pretty good match made, uh, like Penix wouldn't necessarily be the guy that I would put in the Sean Payton system and, and love at nearly as much as, as what could be with, you know, kind of more of a McVeigh style system. Yeah. So system and weapons. I mean, right. Weapons right. Weapons alone. Yeah. So Nick's is in a definitely in a bit of a deficit of the rest of the team around him. So that's that's a that's a negative. I think it's a bummer. Um. You know, you have Mims and mm-hmm. Sutton. You got to hang on to Sutton for a year now with with Bo Nix. So um, that would be the smart thing to do, because I feel like Mims and, and Franklin, frankly, are maybe a little redundant. The old Spider-Man meme a little yeah. bit. Um, but I love that meme. They do. I hate that meme. But they have they have a lot of speed. Um, and we're and we're transitioned into, into a new phase of the Denver Broncos. They even got new uniforms. So, um, all right, two two. We got Ad Mitchell, which I, I I thought that was high. We did another draft. I believe he went two seven or two eight. Mm-hmm. So there's probably going to be some variation here on some of these mid twos, late first round guys that people either really love or people either really hated, um, and that had. You know, they don't they don't love the Persall pick or they don't love the Leggett pit or they don't like the Coleman pick and they didn't really like those guys to begin with. So see you later. They're staying down there. They loved A.D. Mitchell. So the, they don't care that he was projected to go top 17 in the initial lines that came out from Circo a week ago. And he was projected to be a first round pick over Xavier Worthy right. um, and fell down a little bit. I still like A.D. Mitchell, but he'd be further down this list for me. Um, so A.D. Mitchell going 2-2. Two, two. Corum 2-3. Two, Coleman Two four Brooks two five Xavier Leggett two six and Trey Benson two seven. Um, what are your What are your thoughts through here, Big D? Seems like to me, Ad Mitchell may be a hair high. Corum may be a hair high. I think you got to put some respect on Keon Coleman's name. You got to put some respect on the two on the on the two running backs, Benson and Brooks. You probably got to be more respect on the Pearsall name here and and. Leggett, do what you want to do with him. I mean, he's yeah. going to be the flavor that you either love or you hate. Yep. Yeah, I agree with that. I mean, I, I, I your quorum take is is good. I would, I would drop that down a little bit. I would probably drop Mitchell down a little bit. Um, Brooks, I think, has landed in a pretty decent spot for opportunity. Um, and Benson, um, you know, we'll we'll see what happens with our our boy James Conner. But but you know, Benson is in a good spot in Arizona. They they. They prove that they can. They know how to run the ball there. So for me, I would go um, not in a particular order, but kind of that Coleman, Brooks, Benson, uh, per- Persall uh, tier with maybe Leggett kind of at the end of that, right? Either at the end or at the top of the next one, somewhere right in there. Um, haven't officially ranked it out yet, but that that's to me my gut is like got to take the got to take the shot on Coleman. I mean, like he's in Buffalo. He's by all intents and purposes, you know, I don't obviously, I don't think he's replacing Diggs, but uh, but play style wise, you would you got to say that he's got enough upside and enough big playability mm-hmm. that you know he's he's a great at at worst he's a great flex play, and if I can get a high end flex play in the second round with the potential to get into that wide receiver two two range, then right. I feel good about that. Um, same thing with. Uh, Pearsall, you may have to sit on him a little bit, depending on what they do with Debo and what they do with um, Ayuk. Ayuk, or or either or, or, or even Kittle. There was rumors there with Kittle on the move, possibly not, possibly. But either way, like you you talked about the offense, the offense in San Francisco, he fits right in. Mm-hmm. Slick Rick is is yeah. is going to fit right there, and and um, you know I I don't know if he could be. There's a reason why he's in the second round, right? I'm I'm not, I, I'm, I'm not calling for him to be you know too much higher than probably like that 
RB or wide receiver two range to flex play, you know, especially in the first couple of years. But but he's also talented enough where he can creep up a little bit right. and have some some decent weeks for you. So, yeah. Yeah. So, I, you know, like I said, A.D. Mitchell got the opposite of what you that, you know, Ke- he got what you wanted Keon Coleman to get. And Keon Coleman was somebody who was already on the decline. But Keon Coleman gets gets the landing spot that would have propped anybody's value up. And, and some people will stay very aggressively and staunchly against Keon Coleman. But look, that's that's he fits kind of seemingly what they needed. They needed something a little different. I would have loved to see, you know, Xavier Worthy or, or Lad McConkey go there, but that's not really necessarily this. You know, they have Shakir and they have Curtis Samuel now, who you know may, maybe both of those guys slightly underrated. They, they probably won a little bit here. Uh, a big winner is probably Kincaid in this situation to not have some somebody who you think is going to be a dominating force for targets week in week out. But Keon Coleman gives you that bigger body. We can we can kind of we can throw it up to him when we need to. He does do some really some good stuff at a high level. There are certainly some red flags, uh, but it gives it gives uh, Josh Allen a different style of target to uh, kind of use at his uh, pleasure, if you will. Uh, so Keon Coleman, I think, deserves to be somewhere around that two four area, whereas I was putting him towards the back half of this draft because there was so many red flags. But now you've got the capital, and now you've got you know, a, a really good landing spot, which, you know, people will sing until they're blue in the face about draft capital and landing spot. And he got right. both of them. And some people will still say no, no, uh, yeah. but I'm, I'm willing to give him a shot. Like you said, at the two, four, like, let's go. I would, I would probably put Corum Benson or uh, sorry, Benson Brooks, Pearsall and Keon Coleman up in the front half of this this thing and, and push A.D. Mitchell probably to the back of that list and then and then take A.D. Mitchell. But I mean, he's got he really does have as much upside as any of those guys as well. Yeah. Um, and really didn't get a bad landing spot by any means. Just went later than when, it, you know, while you were watching the draft, I think you said it, Big D, while you were watching the draft, he seemed like he was really, really fallen. But then if you didn't watch the draft and just saw the, the paper, it's like I really wasn't that. I mean, you know, near yeah. the end of the 50, second 50 second overall. Uh, right. Wasn't, you right. Know, uh, wasn't that bad, but it, it just. It felt worse because you're right. like, where is he? Yeah. Where is he? Where Every is time he? Every a team pick. came up to pick and it wasn't him, you're like, Ooh, yeah. oh, yeah. Like, and and then just in considering the first round was like, um, I can't remember that stat now, but I mean, it was the lowest defensive, right? Um, you know, draft uh, amount, draft amount in, yeah. in in a long time, and so like all these offensive players are going and he's not around there. It's like, wait a minute, what's what's up? And then in addition to that, him going to the Colts, it just you know. We got to see how Richardson performs right. in offense. He's never uh, he's never finished a season yet as a as a professional, but he's also um, you know we don't know can he can he support right. two wide receivers for the long term. And Pitt, Pittman is still I mean this doesn't hurt Pittman to me you know um, I, I I I I don't think it really takes away from Pittman, but I think obviously your other guys your Alec and your uh, Josh Downs and and then now Mitchell you know that's gonna that's that could create some competition yeah. we'll see and see right. who comes out of that wash but because of that that's part of the reason not just the slip but also just the landing spot it's part of the reason why he drops a little bit for me so right I, w- I would tend to agree there and then then you have Xavier Leggett who was a first round pick who I you know I think middle of the round here you know kind of that two six to two eight range um fine if you want to take a shot on him the, the Panthers traded up for him they're going to take that first rounder again. There's some there's some flags there. There is some context to some of those flags. We've talked about it in the past, so I, you know I don't really want to get into it per se. But sometimes context is very much needed yeah. in some rationale. Um, I heard Canales talk about him, and they basically said that he he basically checks all the boxes of everything that they're going to run on offense. He does all those things really well, and he's like, that's all I need my guy to do. That I'm picking at that point. So uh, I'm going to trust. Canales, he hasn't let me down anywhere that he's been. He's he's raised the tide of everything that's going on. They they seemed, you know, everyone now because of one bad year. Uh, as soon as you mention anything on the Carolina Panthers, everyone's just like, oh yuck, yeah. And it's just like, well, this is how the, this is how you gain value on things, right? Yeah. This is this is a ship that nobody wants to touch because it was so gross last year and it's been mismanaged. And Tepper seems like a like a jo. Mm-hmm. Um, but Jerkoff. but. Canales is coming. Nobody could have survived in that ecosystem. Is Mingo terrible? I have no idea. I, mean, I know he played a lot last year, so that's yeah. that that could be a good thing. It could be a bad thing. They didn't do anything, but really nobody did anything because Bryce was under such duress constantly. And how could you be comfortable with 
everything around you just seems like was second guessed at every step of the way. Right. Um, and now they've gone out and spent money on guards and they, they came in here and they had a skill position draft. They got you Brooks. They got you uh, Leggett, whether you agree with it or not. Maybe it was a bad pick. Maybe it wasn't. Maybe he's going to be awesome. But they went and got Deontay Johnson. Mingo could still be good. Thielen could still be fine. So and then they went and took Jatavion Sanders in the fourth round, which is, a you know, an offense that keeps the tight end out there a lot. So it's a decent landing spot for him, although the capital's not good. So they've restocked the, the cupboard on 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 weapons. And I'm going to trust Canales went and got his guys that fit what he does um, right. and, and knows what he needs because he went from Seattle and revived that whole deal. And then he went over and didn't miss a beat with Godwin and Mike Evans and Kate Otten and, and crew down there. Baker. Uh, and, and Rashad White was excellent uh, yep. for them. And, and now Brooks can maybe fill that role with a little bit of uh, Miles and a little bit of Chuba uh, spelling in and out. So, uh, you know, Leggett and, and Coleman will, will, you know, are going to be the analytical people's, uh, hey, that, that, that those guys, that, that those franchises are idiotic for taking those. Yeah. Time will tell, and I'm okay with taking the shot on them because I don't hate a lot of the tape. There's just breakout no. age was a little late on on Leggett, and there's some red flags in, in Keon Coleman's profile uh, when you go through it. But the highlights for both of those are good, and and who whose highlights aren't awesome. But those guys are those guys seem to have some special abilities um, that, if coached and and, and um, schemed in the right direction, I think can be very useful uh, and uh, targets and and pieces on on said teams Keon Coleman has a Nikhil Harry stat though where the contested catches are over like 26 percent and the contested targets right. are over a threshold that's Nikhil Harry bad so that's the like the major red flag for sure Keon. yeah and it just, his body is kind of the separation whereas I mean I guess you could have made the same argument for Nikhil Harry but yeah it he seems, was a compiler it seems like the game speed is is plenty fast for Keon Coleman um where, right when he's running them drills at the on the, in the combine, right. and then he's miles one of the, per hour, he was were, the fastest guy there. Right. Like he, he, the speed's there. The the, he, the the separation isn't necessarily where you want it to be all the time. Just, yeah. You know, both of the, you know probably still got to learn and, and figure some things out. But there is some raw fun abilities uh, to that guy. And and like I said, for for Keon specifically, I think he fits. Uh, the need that they had for a, a type of receiver that that they want to line up on that that outside out there, and they can do a bunch of different things with, um, you know, Curtis and and I think Shakir is going to have a big role now and yep um, and Kincaid so and Samuel Curtis oh right. you said Curtis sorry yeah um, yeah I agree I mean look at um, I'll, I'll just touch on him real quick is I mean the, the, I've already gone and said this a couple times he's my favorite wide receiver in this draft just from a personality and what he's had to go through and and a right. voice not 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 your number one wide receiver yeah not my ranking number one wide but receiver as a it, human being as a human being and and as a voice because <laughs> yeah. you know the voice is just <laughs> amazing but yeah. but I I just I just love it and yeah analytically um, he didn't have the breakout age um, and he didn't have this he didn't have that but. When you watch, when you go through the tape, when you start to piece together some of the um, unfortunate events that have happened in his life, but but you see that he continuously improves. He continuously improves, and he's passionate. And he wants to, and he you know he likes the he likes ball. Yeah. Um, you know he, <laughs> he's he, all about ball. He's all about ball. Um, he he loves you know he he seems to like embrace the game and 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 more than just like oh I want to make money and I you know I'm excited like he's just. He's just passionate about it. And I think it's funny that they're like, we're not letting him get past 32. He leaked that out. Mm -hmm. And I was like, well, you shouldn't say that. And then what do they do? They trade up right. into the first round to get him and don't let him get past 32. Man of their word. Um, yeah. Uh, 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 you know, uh, according to what he said. So so oh, for man, me, yeah, word. he's he's kind of in that. Um, he he to he can easily kind of move up here a little bit as we get a w further away from the draft as we start to piece Digest some of these and pieces figure some and, things and out. you know this is just off the cuff right and and uh, so but he could be in that inching towards the beginning of the f um, second for me pretty pretty easily um, and, and you know he could probably drop too so I think right in the middle I mean he's literally uh, on on this on this draft okay I want to make sure it's on the right one. Uh, at two six, I mean, right. He's, he's right smack dab in the middle of the I'd two, so it's properly perfect. the yeah. range of where I'm willing to go with him uh, currently. It would seem. Uh, so, all right, let's keep it moving here. The next couple are Pearsall, Jalen Polk at two nine, Malachi Corley, 
Ben Sinnott, Marshawn Lloyd at 212. So Pearsall, big riser, Polk, big riser. Corley is definitely, he was kind of, you know, Polk, Pearsall, Corley. Those were kind of some of your shots, right? Yep. At at uh, the, the, the three turn. And now those have all kind of came up and, and uh, now they seem to be, they're going to be at least to start this thing off firmly planted in, in the end of the second round here. Uh, maybe not sin it for everybody, but I, I, I took him at the 211. Uh, and then Marshawn Lloyd, I feel like that was kind of where our ADP was was kind of having him a little. Uh, I could see him kind of being more pushed back into that uh, three to where the where Corley and Polk and those guys were. I could see Lloyd and Wright being in those areas now. Right. Those are yeah. going to be some of the guys that fill in those spaces. Still fun picks, sure, um, but you know just different ones uh, because the landing spots for all other running backs were a little. You know, sus. Yes, <laughs> sus is, is a good way to put it. But um, Polk is interesting. Seems to be a guy that definitely fits into uh, the, the New England culture of where they've been. Now, right. we have talked about this being kind of a new regime and a new day and a new dawn for, for New England. Right. Um, but Mayo has been in, in that, that system, system for yeah. a very long time. And, and Polk is somebody who does all the dirty work really well, right? Yes, he does, yeah. Um, I, no stretch of the imagination do I think this guy's a one. Um, he's probably best as a three, and that's yep. what he was every time that Jalen McMillan was right. He was absolutely the two uh, or the three on this team. Uh, Polk, Polk, Polk was, was yep. right. Mm-hmm. Every you know, uh, the, the if you look at the stats and the yards per route run, if if I believe uh, Scott Barron had a tweet, if if McMillan was out there and ran seven or more routes, uh, both Polk. Roma Dunze and McMillan were uh, substantially higher in yards per route run than, than Jalen Polk. Um, and it's no knock on Polk. I think Polk's, no. Polk's a really good player. Uh, but he did get the capital, and it does seem to fit into what they kind of want to do. He has that mm-hmm. – it just seems to be a, a, a mentality and, and team uh, – I don't know what the word I'm looking for is – uh, but team vibe synergy kind of fit there. Yeah. Um, I don't, I don't know how high I'm willing to go on Polk just yet. That might be a little rich for me, but I think that's where he's going to live. Uh, so I mean, with the draft capital here. that he yeah. got, it, it kind of makes sense that he's up. He's, he's, he's around that two nine. Spot. And you're a UW guy. So what's, what, give me the Polk, uh, Polka, polka, polka here. Yeah, I think, you know, we kind of talked about this before, and I said that he was kind of like, um, from a production standpoint, not from a playing standpoint, I think he's more like, more like a Palmer or more like a Boyd, where it's a high-quality three. He could step into a situation. And, Bo- and if you haven't been playing long enough, Boyd back in the day was a stud. Yeah. Um, the Tyler Boyd. Tyler, that is. Tyler so Boyd. He was, it's not was a, he's not taking a slight on Polk. That if he becomes Tyler Boyd, that is a great day for your dynasty at two nine. Yeah. Yeah. Just, just the point being, he could have his days where he's in that wide receiver two, maybe even um, back half of a wide receiver one week. Right. Like be, because of the way the gameplay or whatever, but most days he's probably going to be a flex play to wide receiver three um, situation. And, and that, and there's nothing wrong with that. I, but, but I do agree. He's, he's a professional, um, not pro- well, he is a professional. He's been drafted, but he, he's 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 got some professional talents already coming in. He's 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 got some shine on him. He was forced to play, um, a little bit more with uh, Mc, McMillan, um, McMillan's injury, um, specifically this last year and kind of put in the in the spotlight and he performed. So, um, I, I'm happy for the for the guy. I, I but I but I agree with you. I think he's a back half of the second. Two nine, I'm okay with. You know, probably I probably have a few other uh, above him, but but uh, you know that back half of the second, early third stab, um, especially with how high they went up and got him. Obviously, if they're if they're drafting him at the uh, what did he end up going? He was um, sixty five. Sixty five. I mean, uh, you know, I I feel like they have a, a good idea of his skill set and how they want to utilize him. Is it's basically what that that meant, and so. Um, Corley, sorry, 37th, 65 was, uh, was Corley. Yeah. 30. Yeah. Okay. That makes more sense. Yeah. yeah. Cause I thought it was a little higher than that. So yeah, it was, well, once so, I said that, I was like, that's the wrong. Yeah. So, yeah. so him being that high, I mean, they've, they've got to have like, you know, like a tar- they, they that, that was one of their targets, right. Is right. kind of what I'm saying. He was on their board yeah. and they had a reason why they he was on their board. So that alone, you got to sometimes look at what the teams are telling you when they do these kind of things. Right. And, and, and so, um, and then you, just to touch on 
Senate, um, that Washington offense, I mean, I think it's a great stab. The, the tight yeah. end uh, one in there is still undetermined. You know, right. um, Logan Thomas is gone, I believe. Um, Not sure, but I, if I, he isn't, he's hanging on by a thread anyway. Yeah. Literally. The guy's never gone, it seems like. I mean, they do have Zach, gone. They do have Zach Ertz there, right? And Cole Turner was a was another taxi stab that I've, that I've had around for a while. So, they, you know, they do have some stuff there in the tight end room, but... I think with the new, um, you know, with the new offense, a new quarterback coming in, I mean, a late stab like this is, is great. And then Lloyd, um, he was pretty high in my rankings, uh, cause, but he's, but he's also, uh, you know, he, he's an exceptional young talent. And in, in my opinion, mm-hmm. um, I felt like he was being sleeped on by a few people, but, um, that green Bay, uh, Josh Jacobs contract isn't. It you know came out as like a three year. It's a big deal, blah blah blah. But from from what I understand, and and you guys can correct me if I'm wrong. I know you will. But um, I believe it's only like really like a one year. It can certainly be a one year. Yeah, deal if they, they can get out be. of it. You know, and so there's if Josh Jacobs doesn't look like the Josh Jacobs that was the the RB three and eight and whatever he was and, yeah. and an RB one. Obviously, that's what we're using in the fantasy terms. But if he doesn't look like a top ten RB to the to the Packers and isn't performing then they can get out and see what they have in Marshawn Lloyd potentially here exactly yeah and but and that's not to say I, I think Josh Jacobs is still going to be fine Same. but I, I do think Lloyd can um, outplay AJ Dillon and so that's yeah. kind of where I'm like agreed I don't mind having that second back and a really yeah. good offense so there's probably there's a few shots I would rather take than Lloyd probably right there uh, that's probably a little too expensive money for me um, but sure, yeah. ben, back to Senate I, I, I took that shot at 211 because it's tight end premium, they don't really have one. They have Ertz, who's older right. and has had a bad injury. Um, but we're moving forward with Jaden Daniels. Sinnott is a is a queen on a chessboard as far as what he can do. He can do a lot. I wish he would have landed with a, a coordinator that I liked a little better, which you know he obviously landed with Cliff Kingsbury, who has done some good stuff in the league but seemingly kind of got stale and figured out never really evolved so right maybe we'll see another evolution maybe the beginning of it could be could be back to being good but synod is a really fun chess piece you can do all sort you could line them up as full like if you can use him in the way that a shanahan would use uh kind of a hybrid between kittle and uh kyle use then then cynic if he's basically a full-time tight end who goes in the backfield from time to time to do some dirty work. Boy, oh boy, what a weapon you could have there and, and what a steal you could have. And he's got the good draft capital and he's got the athleticism. He's just a little smaller yeah. um, than, than you would want your prototypical tight end to be. So uh, that that's kind of my thoughts there. I would let Lloyd probably slide a little bit. Corley, but I think that's fair to take him there. I do really like Corley. I like the way he plays. I'm a sucker for those kind of guys. Mm-hmm. I like that. I like being the yak king. I like being that... Uh, Kind of, I'm not going to call them Debo, but those kind of guys who just operate differently. But you have to I think you have to run an offense and and get Corley his touches in the way that he needs to get his touches, uh, which it'll be up to the Jets to do that. But they sorely needed one more playmaker, and you know Mike Williams has has missed some time recently. Right, um, Garrett Wilson has been great, but outside of that, it's it's Brownlee and and Xavier Gibson who were 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 fun players uh from from hard knocks of last year which i i hope those guys go on to be great um and i think they could certainly help out this team but they needed a a guy in corley and they got it done there i think that's fair value for him right there i i may look to potentially the 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 bigger upside and sustained uh ability of the quarterback play from maybe a, a burton at that spot there mm-hmm. um who went at three five who what I think that is right now is a product of that it, you have to scroll very far down. And we this is the first one, the first rookie draft we did. It was a sixty second timer. Yeah, you didn't have the luxury of sitting around and 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 having if you weren't looking ahead. Burton's pretty far down, but that's not going to last very long. Burton will be shooting up that draft board because the capital was way higher. Right. If if you've got the reception perception stuff, you've seen that he's gushed about that, and that's a very big check mark in a lot of people's oh, yeah. minds. And there's a lot of really smart minds out there that I trust football wise that were kind of ah, if, if Burton didn't have the off the field stuff, uh, we might be you know he might be a, a top five six wide receiver. Right. Uh, and he checked a lot of boxes. He's really really exciting. T Higgins. We don't exactly know what's about to happen. Tyler Boyd 
out of there. Yeah. I think I might take a shot up up instead of uh, in that Corley Polk area. Maybe maybe a Burton. Right. Tied to Burrow for for a while there, but anyway, let's uh let's open up the third round here. We got Troy Franklin at three one. We got Tez Walker at three two. We got. Uh, Braylon Allen at 3-3, Spencer Rattler 3-4, Burton at 3-5, and I want to say Russell Wilson, but Roman Wilson there uh, at 3-6. So, uh, like I just mentioned, I think Burton is criminally low there, but I think there's some rationale. Sure, yep. I think Allen is way too high there. Like, that. I don't think, but I think when the time comes to settle out, that's going to be back end of the third Probably. pick because you, yeah. you got Brees Hall. They took another running back. The very next pick, I believe, that were the men. They might have taken one in between them, but then they took. Uh, I'm drawing a blank on his name, uh, the Jets. So I can't take Allen in that mark. He's got to slide back a little bit. But Troy Franklin at three one, that was your pick. You took a duck. So but it, that's I based, took two ducks, man. I yeah. I think that's kind of you kind of have to right there. You kind of right? have to. Yeah. I mean, three one. I mean, Franklin uh, obviously going to be that long target in third mm-hmm. round. I don't mind taking a uh, taking an upside shot. So. He makes a lot of sense to me there. Um, I, you know, like you said, clock pressure. The fact that I had Bo Nix already on the squad, just kind of looking at the little squad that we that we were doing during this draft. I probably would go Corley over Franklin. Um, it, it'd be pretty close. I if mean, available, he wasn't available here. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, he, yeah, he yeah. likely could be available. He he likely could. Yeah. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Burton. I meant Burton, not Corley. Okay. Uh, Bur- I'd probably go Burton over Franklin, um, just because I think there's more potential there, uh, tied to a better uh, proven offense. No one asset. No, no one asset in yeah. Burrow. Um, and so I, I I probably would have went that way, but again, I don't. I'm saying probably, which tells me they're probably in a tier. So I'm <laughs> I'm okay with going Franklin. Yeah. So. Tear them up. Tear them up, boys. Tears, boys. Um, Tez Walker got got okay capital. I believe it was a fourth rounder for for Tez. And yep. kind of goes into a spot where it seems Tez-like. Um, Ravens are, are one of those teams that Tez is probably going to be spotty week in, week out. Right. Um, if, if he turns into what you want him to be. I would have loved to see somebody like Malachi Corley or Keon Coleman or Leggett go to the Ravens. They they feel like those that kind of brand. Yep. Uh, much sense. like we were kind of talking, Polk Falcons feels or uh, Polk uh, New England feels like on brand. But Walker, you know, seems like he, he fits in there. And I, I don't I don't hate taking the stab there. I would for I would for sure go Burton. Um, I do like the Jatavian Standers landing spot, so I'd probably move him up. Um, I like Jalen McMillan still. He's he's a little further back there, and and Baker was four one. Roman Wilson's interesting at the three six. He goes to the Steelers. They've been great at drafting wide receivers. You got you got to uh, anytime they're doing something in the receiver room, yeah. you got to uh, take attention. notice, yep. pay attention. Mm-hmm. Ears got to go up. Not my favorite guy, uh, but you got to put some respect on his name. Uh, so I, I think I could take Roman Wilson over Tez. In that spot, and we were, like I said, we're going to push uh, Braylon Allen back. Spencer Rattler, fifth round quarterback. I don't hate the landing spot for what could be long term, but I'm okay with pushing Spencer Rattler back to the back half of the third, early fourth now. Yeah. At this point, if it was second or third capital, for sure. Com- completely different. Yeah. Completely different. Mm-hmm. Um, so, what are your thoughts here on on three one through three six? Any anything really jumping out at you? No, I mean, you know, not necessarily. I think, uh, you know, um, it, like you said, Wilson in Pittsburgh and Burton and Cincinnati kind of kind of stick out to me, partially because of the players, partially because of the spot, you know, mm-hmm. partially because of the history. So um, I, I think as we go up here, up this board a little bit, I, I agree with you. I ha- I would have probably put right above. Um, we'll, we'll talk about him, in, uh, but him soon. But the Miami backfield, I think, has gotten a little interesting. <laughs> Um, you know, Sanders going to Carolina is also interesting. Again, it's Carolina, so nobody wants to touch the offense, but the opportunity, you know, the, the pieces there. So, so for me, I might, I might have changed this up a little bit, but I, I agree. I mean, Allen is, uh, Allen being, he is 
uh, what is he, 20? I don't even think he can drink tonight, you know, for, or <laughs> right. yesterday, whatever he was drafted. But he's also behind, you know, the best <laughs> running back in, in, in the biz. So, right. or, or if not the best in your eyes, he's, he's top three. Okay. So, mm-hmm. so point being is like, I, I just don't see him playing unless there's an injury. And if there's an injury, you know, we don't want that anyway. So, right. so, um, so I think that, that pushes down. So, but it's hard, man. It's hard. It's hard in the first, the uh, first beginning to, to, to get these, um, uh, you know, right, right out of the gate, you know, it's going to take some time to shuffle out these values and see, see where things lie. And there could be some team changes. There's going to be undrafted free agents that are going to come in and, you know, those don't necessarily make an impact per se, but sometimes they do, you know, mm-hmm. Rashid Shahid for the saints is a, he's an undrafted. Pacheco, idiot. Was, a uh, late Pacheco was a late seven, you know, like, yeah. so there's still a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, data points that are going to be, uh, um, going to be, you know, for this, for the full portfolio. So, right. Portfolio. All right. Let's, uh, let's hammer out the back half of this third here. We got, uh, Garendo at three, seven, Wright at three, eight, Sanders at three, nine, Baker at three, 10, McMillan at three, 11 and Estime at three, 12. Uh, I would, I'm okay with jumping a few of these guys up further in the round. And I would move, like I said, some of those other guys we talked about a little further back in the round. Yeah. Uh, Garendo needs to go back a little bit for me. Uh, it's you know I love the the spark score, speed score, athleticism score. That's great. Mm-hmm. Um, Elijah Mitchell's still a really good player. Yeah, and CMC is obviously there. How long that lasts, I don't know, but I'm okay with taking the shot. That's probably a fourth round shot for me. Yeah. Um, Jalen Wright, very interesting. Not the best fantasy uh, landing spot to to right off the rip. It's probably really good for the Dolphins, but a chain missed time. Mostert's yeah. missed time. But they just put more speed and more pressure on you. So right is a is a you know right around this area would be somebody I'd be willing to uh, strike and and feel okay about it. Marshawn Lloyd I think should be pushed back here and Wright should be pushed back here and, and maybe they could be up a block or two uh, to take a shot because I like both of the profiles. I like both of the players a lot. Right. I don't necessarily hate the landing spots. We just have it's a little muddy there to begin with right yeah it's it's money but you know you know that most it's you know he's got his one-year contract again you know which is he's great i love the 39 fact that he's there <laughs> he's a he's a veteran you know um a chains come um a chan jackie chan uh a chan is uh, uh a chan has come in, in the comments i know you're mad <laughs> uh a chan has come in and he's he looks bigger just from some of the pictures mm-hmm. you know some of the rumors out there he's gotten some bulk on him you know that but he didn't last the whole season. Mozart's old. So to me, it makes a, it's, it. And, and then that offense All right, produces fine, fantasy. fine. I'm 127. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, that offense produces fantasy points for the running back position. So, yeah. so, it, so it's, it's an easy earlier third round pick for me. Yeah, it's not, it's not fun because everybody needs instant gratification and satisfaction. Yeah. But sometimes the play is, is the, the pick and pick and wait it out. And, uh, and like I said, that's, that's not a strong suit of any, a lot of fantasy gamers because I think we're we're in a big uh, dynasty boom. A lot of people coming yeah. over from redraft. A lot of people listening to a lot of other people who need the immediate satisfaction. There's no way you could be good if you're not good right away. I'm a brunette. <laughs> but <laughs> no relation, just a little added. <laughs> right, right is is a lot of fun and went to a spot where they have a type and they stuck to that type and it could be game two as soon as Wright is leading that backfield. Well, um, and, it, and it, for me, it's also one of those talent evaluations, right? So going into this draft, I had Wright as my third running back. So, right. you know, I, um, I, I feel like he's got the talent to um, make noise enough to be around, you know, get right. some touches. And then if there is a, an opportunity, I think he also has the talent to kind of take away. Right. And, um, but you're right. There, there is, a, there is a, the muddle there, but I, I think in the long run, He's going to be a decent fantasy asset in, yeah. in the third round. I, I I definitely like the like the shot. And that's a good point. You uh, you know we, we we have now the capital and and the landing spots at, at our disposal. Um, and he was your third guy, so it doesn't necessarily mean he's not still your third guy. You just have to adjust to no longer be taking him at possibly two five two six. Right. You need to push him back a little bit, and and because that's we don't exactly know where the public value is going to settle out. That's a, that's a big part of this equation, right? Because you should never just not like somebody because of their profile or something. But if the value is right, you take them. You know, Jalen Wright, good evaluation, 
bummer of a little little bit of a bummer of a landing spot sort of but it's mostly just a situation the landing spot's great so yeah i uh, still still like him a lot and then jatavion sanders for me i'd push him up a few spots here like i said pushed a couple other guys back he didn't he didn't test well right um but I think he's he's kind of and I saw it on the draft coverage tonight. I think Daniel Jeremiah even said like kind of has an Isaiah likely like feel to him. And then he gets drafted in Carolina. Kate Otten last year was number one in snap share percentage, not not like ninety five percent. So he went out and found himself a guy who is potentially going to be on the field a shit ton. Right. And it's it's. Tremble and it's Ian Thomas and that's a that's a competition that Jatavion Sanders can go in there uh, and win uh, and this is a very very good receiving tight end here and we're talking tight end premium we're in the third round of somebody who's going to be on the field potentially that much right and a guy again I liked with all transparency it's not take lock because if it was take lock I'd still be drafting him you know two eight but right. hey if we're gonna if you're gonna tell me now I can get this guy in the in the third round. I'm taking him, uh, and, and and you know there'll, there'll be a guy or three in front of him, but after that, it's it's going to be Sanders' season because I do believe there is a, a a big pathway pathway opportunity to being on the field yeah. a lot and and getting a lot of uh, little checkdowns from uh, Bryce Young as as they try to you know pull him out of the hole that that he started in. So I like Jatavian Sanders' landing spot, and then same with Baker. He, yeah, four. I think he was like the first pick of the fourth round or something along those lines, uh, but. Pats don't really have anybody. He's he's a good receiver who can be their outside guy and kind of stay out there and and do what they want. They they gave May at least a couple of options now if he gets in there, or they start off with Brissett in there for a few games or or, or even the whole season and and Polk and Baker develop and then they come back and get a killer number one here uh, in the seasons to follow. Uh, but I think both of those guys are. Are nice little step ups from what was there and what was around. Right. Both of those guys have have really good spots in their profile, and they seem to potentially fit what New England wants to do and where they want to go with things. And I like Baker. Just again, we got to adjust our rankings a little bit and adjust where we're taking those guys. Let the values kind of settle out where they're going, and then we can decide is the value worth it or is the value not worth it. Right now, the Baker value is outstanding, and I would take that shot uh, a, a ton here. So. Really like Baker. And then, of course, I took McMillan at the 311. I was uh, smitten with with McMillan here. But, again, we got to bump him down a little bit. We yeah. went into a situation that it might be a year or two before he really, really gets an opportunity to take over and be the guy who's on the field all of the time. Like, And, and really, and even if he is on the field a lot, like Evans and Godwin are going to eat and, and Otten uh, – maybe takes another step forward and, and Rashad white is still there. They got, they brought Bucky Irvin in. So yeah, um, it might be a minute before he's got bona fide potential hall of famers and, and or hall of really good guys uh, around, him. around yeah. him and in front mm -hmm. of him, which is beneficial yeah. to McMillan in the long run. I believe you, we talked about that on the live stream that, that it's nice to have a, a good veteran presence. And, and, you know, Godwin kind of has a game that can be sort of, a little bit like what McMillan can do for Very your team, similar. yeah. Uh, you know, kind of moving forward, just eat in that middle of the field, move the chains, and take the top off here and there. Uh, McMillan, but you know, very much like him. And then estimate at three twelve to going to Denver. Why not take the shot? So, uh, any closing thoughts on the back half of the third here, uh, Big D? No, I agree with you. I think McMillan is a great shot, but I don't expect him to to produce right out of the gate because of because of the opportunity that he's going to have. Um, but he is, like I was saying when we were talking about Polk, he was right behind Odunze in a lot of a lot of categories, a lot of the way that he was um, in that offense, in Washington's offense this year, but also last year and, and, and before. He was he was not ever looked over, right? right. Like So he, he makes enough noise where he's around, he's a thorn in, in the other wide receiver's side to be like, pay attention and, and yeah, be competitive. I, and He was better than Odunze in 2022. Yeah, yeah, he was, like, yeah. He mm -hmm. was he was team high in a lot of stats. That, a lot of stats, And, and yeah. it's no slight, on, but then Odunze came back and, and, and Crow, maybe it was 21, I don't remember, but one of those years, McMillan was a dog out there. Yeah. Um, and, you know, when when he was when he was out he was missed right. and then he came back and and had some really big big plays for them in in 23 really liked the profile really sticking with him but we got to we got to bump him back a little bit yeah and i think you know with the with the the patriots um i mean they spent 
five picks, five or six picks on offense mm -hmm. kind of tells you what they were focusing on. Right. Like and so anytime, uh, and then Baker, uh, you know, like you were already, everything you already said is I, I agree with, I don't really have any, uh, anything to add besides the fact that look at what the teams are doing with the draft picks too. look at what the teams are trying to tell you. They're revamping this offense. So obviously, right. Again, he's going to be a big, big part of it. Uh, Estime, I, I probably wouldn't take him there, but I, it's again, I, I don't, it's more so my evaluation on him and then the landing spot and, mm -hmm. and Sean Payton um, has a tendency of doing okay for your running back. So right. it's it's not a bad thing. It's just, just my personal preference. But I think the back half of the third, beginning of the fourth is is about the right value for Estime. And I think that's what we'll see once it comes yeah. out of the out of the shake. So Yeah. All right, let's jump into this fourth round. I think there's probably some players I would take over Estime there, but I still it's not to say that I don't want Estime. I sure. want to get it. I like Estime. I like I like the tape of him, and I, and I think you're right with um, Sean it's, Payton has had a good history with running backs. Yeah, it's just the ceiling play, right? right. It's, it, at this point in the draft, I'm looking for ceiling play, right. fourth round. You got to get past Javante. You got to get past Jalen. Uh, you got to get or, big, or uh, uh, Jaleel McLaughlin, and you, and you have to even get back. I believe they have P. Ryan still. So, like, yeah. there's three good, pretty good players in front of you. Right. Estime, a little Estime offers you something potentially a little different, the ricochet romance. Oh. Um, so uh, let's go into the fourth round. We got Bucky Irving, uh, Vidal, Luke McCaffrey, Shipley, Ray Davis, and Cowing as your first six. So those are all guys I like taking shots on. Uh, Big D, you took Bucky Irving at 4-1. What are your thoughts there? Yeah, I mean, just the the concept of Rashad White and and how he's used uh, Irving really reminds me of kind of kind of that that play style mm -hmm. of of checkdown and PPR. Um, maybe I don't, you know, I'm not trying to put a comp on him. It's, it's just more of a like, where do I think he's at? I think he's probably a lighter Hunt uh, when Hunt was not Hunt Kareem now, Hunt? Kareem Hunt, but back in the day, back in the day, Hunt, um, uh, not not. Dog. Not that strong per se, but I think he's got that that kind of makeup where he can catch a lot of balls. He can he could basically be what Rashad White was last year, which was really great for your fantasy yeah. team. And and so um, in that offense, we'll see how it changes with the, the with the personnel changes they made in the in the coaching department. But I think it's going to be pretty similar. And and I think Irving, um, you know, watching the Oregon game, uh, some of the Oregon games, um, and and just watching how he he is as a player i think it's a pretty good fit for that system and and uh and for baker so um so i i like the i like the concept of him um in for me it was a i was i was between him and a and a couple other um i think stover was a, another one that i was kind of kind of thinking about um but again it's kind of like in that fourth round i like to take that upside shot mm -hmm. um uh, especially if I earn the 101, right? Uh, I was I was thinking as the 101 drafter, so I probably want that Irving, and maybe I could flip it. Maybe I could do other things, or maybe he just helps me right out of the gate. But but I think I'll be able to see him uh, again. We we word of the day pathway. I see a pathway for him where he could get yeah. volume, he can get work, and I believe he could produce at the NFL level. So yeah, he he's a fourth round running back, which is you know. Not the best, but we've seen some good, good fourth round running backs. And anyone on the fifty three, baby. He didn't. He didn't test extremely well, which really hurt him. Uh, but he, when you watch him on tape, if you watch Oregon, he's always fucking something up, like yeah. in a good way. In a good way. Yeah. Um, and he's really hard to tackle. He's. Uh, you almost never get like a big hit on him. It doesn't seem. He's always kind of got you. He's always moving his body contorting in some sort of way mm -hmm. not taking a direct shot getting you off kilter a little bit um i don't think he had a ton of career catches but he's a he's i think he's a good really a really good receiver i think he's a better runner than rashad white is as well right um, i don't think he's a better receiver because rashad white is one of the best yeah he's a really good receiver, uh, yeah. receiving backs in the league but i think bucky irving is is a really good uh actually between the tackles uh outside you know i think he is a good running back uh just down on him a little bit fourth round pick now now you can get him in the fourth round I, i'm very okay with with taking a shot um on bucky irving and they very much needed another guy yeah to be able to spell rashad white but you're if you're a rashad white owner i think it's you know it's probably another good win for you yeah you didn't get a high you didn't get a you know you didn't get zach charbonnet you didn't get the second round guy coming in and, and right. really being like hmm so i don't think his value has been killed if, if you want to get off or for using him 
uh, in the upcoming season. Yeah, this was a could pathway, not a will pathway. Right, right. Uh, right. And so, and yeah, I mean, I, I agree with you with the, the draft capital, but there just wasn't a lot of draft capital for running backs right. this year in, right. in general. Um, he was, he was, um, there was only, what, four running backs taken in the first three rounds. Obviously, none in the first round, which was the first, right. first since, I think it was 10 years ago, I believe, one of our patrons talked about that and, and brought that stat to my attention. And, um, and so, you know, you've got, you had Brooks in the second and then you had Benson, Corum and Lloyd in the third. And then you've got a, you've got a quite, quite the collection in the fourth. Will right? Shipley, baby. Yep. Shipley, Davis, Irving, um, Isaac, Tigers. Allen, and, um, all, all in the fourth round. So the way that the draft went again, I talked about it on, on, um, uh, or we talked about it a couple times, but and and I, I don't know when we talked about it if we talked about it on this pod already. But that first round was crazy, just the amount of offensive players. So you knew the second round was going to be really heavy defense, just because how much talent was going to be pushed there. So when that happens, then the third, fourth, it's going to mix mix things up. And yeah. so for me, these running back values, these running backs in general, it was already. You know, Brooks could be great, and then there was like, who knows? Some of the other guys, there, you know, Benson, or, um, uh, Benson, and, and that, you know, okay, good. But there's a lot of like, what, what question marks? What, what is, right. what's going to happen? I think we saw what happened, but you know, fourth round, I'm okay to take some shots on some running backs because those are the type of positions where, you know, when you're playing redraft, as an example, sometimes those last picks you 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 choose because you want to see if they're going to perform if they don't you cut them and you right. you have the ability to add someone else to your roster in dynasty it's not that same way but it's in in a way it's that way because you you have these taxi spots or you have these late bench spots and you can be like okay if these running backs don't produce something in the in the first beginning if they have a if they have a pathway and they just are all of a sudden third on the depth chart or something you know like i could probably move on from them or on the flip side and and hopefully in in a lot of these perspectives they're going to show enough where you either have enough where you feel good about holding on to them or you feel good about using some of that package and moving around a little bit. Right. So, yeah, yeah. it's a huge caveat too with FFPC. You want to like leave your startup with one less player and you're going to be shuffling through that last guy. It just depends on how many bench spots you have, you know? Yeah. No, that's a, that's a good point. And, and on the fourth round, it's a good, good time to be stabbing on, on uh, running backs. Vidal was the next one. He, he went a little later, but he went to a very good landing spot. He was one of my favorites. Uh, as a late round stab and he stays right on the late round stab radar he you know it's gus uh edwards and it's uh, a broke down jk dobbins to to usurp and that's it's a v very real possibility uh that that could happen for him uh and, and a, a very fun player luke mccaffrey got good capital so i could see him being in the third round a lot of these times uh he was in the he was a third round uh nfl draft pick he's got uh good levi's good jeans uh, and, and I could be seeing, you know, in, in the Garundo, uh, places or, uh, in the back half of that third, maybe McCaffrey making it into there. Will Shipley. I think you could take him anywhere you want in this fourth round. Ray Davis, same thing. Anywhere you want in this fourth round. Yep. I may take Shipley and, and Ray Davis over Estime. Mm -hmm. Um, I probably would, but it's yep. not to say that again, I don't want Estime. Cowing, I think is a great shot. I, he was a, a late round stab favorite still is went to the Niners. You might have to wait a minute, but. You know, they've had uh, uh, Debo miss time. Right. They've had Ayuk here and there miss some time. And, and when those guys go out, yeah, they don't they, they have this great core of starters. But when they go out, I mean, and, and uh, Jennings is a, a great player for them and has, has really filled in well. But they went and reloaded that that thing and they, they kept both of those receivers, at least for now. Uh, so if there is a little depth issue and they do have some injuries, now they can facilitate and get through there and, and we can see a little bit more of those those guys. Cowing, I think, is the best later round receiver they've drafted recently. In a while. Yeah, um, and it's kind of like the just real quick point on that is like I like to try to bring it back into what, what people are uh, can relate and not everybody's a gamer, but if you play first person shooter games, you've got your you got your machine gun, right? And then every now and then you gotta switch to your pistol because yeah. you've ran out of ammo or or something's happened, right? And Cowing's one of those players where I feel like he can be, as you were saying, there's an injury, there's something, he could sneak in there and all right. of a sudden you he's he, he's a great best ball play in the in the words right. of fantasy football, right? Um, and you you not you have a you have a true like smaller slot guy as well. Yeah. So you know, and the Niners can, you know. And I also think um, he's, uh, isn't like punt returns. I was trying to. Um, I, I would assume so, yeah. I mean, just the, the, I mean, that's another thing to keep in mind. 
look into your I know where this is a rookie mock we're talking about rookie but look into your league settings because the change and special team uh, kickoffs this year could change things and if you have punt return yards if you have kickoff return yards or any of those kind of things still activated in your league or or initiated in your league or whatever some of these players might bump up a little bit because of those stats and because of yeah. because of what will happen so that's a good point all right so johnny wilson goes i believe he went to the eagles theo johnson is somebody i think who's going to be rising up here if darren waller retires or even when people kind of realize that that's more of a possibility than not potentially and theo johnson yeah. was that 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 ras score freak there's a lot of untapped potential there right. um so i think he'll he could rise up to that at least Closer to the front of the fourth, Kate Stover, like you mentioned, um, well, you know, a Houston, uh, not a Houston, uh, an Ohio State guy to go with Stroud. So, did did Stroud did Stroud ask for him? Did Stroud well, pound the yeah, table? Yeah, yeah. Um, like I love my Schultz and I love my Brevin Jordan, but you know, if they're if they've been teammates in the past, right. there's already that well you chemistry can, there possibly. You can so. you can roll. They they had multiple tight ends working in there last year. Yeah, um, they signed Schultz, but Stover can be. The guy kind of replacement in the wings waiting right. and, and still getting some use out of him. Um, Smith, I believe, went to Philadelphia at 410. Malik Washington went to the Miami Dolphins late, but they haven't had that third slot type guy at all over there. Right. And I know it's a six round pick and I do like Malik Washington quite a bit. Was surprised he kind of fell this far, but I think that is an outstanding pickup for them. Uh, th this guy is just a G out there on the field. I love, love, love Malik Washington, um, and I will be leaving every rookie draft with him. And then it was a toss-up between him and, and Thrash there for my last pick. I went with uh, Malik because I saw potentially a quicker, cleaner path on a higher flying offense right. um, with the Dolphins instead of Cleveland. Uh, but if if Thrash is uh, ends up being the two over there, which, I mean, at the end of the day, they did trade for Judy, and they have... Elijah, uh, uh, Elijah Moore, but that's not to say either one of those guys have solidified the two over right. there at all. Um, and Amari Cooper's, you know, getting a little bit longer in the tooth. I thought Thrash was going to be a bit higher of a pick and, and be jumped up here. So this is a really good value late in the in the draft. The path isn't quite as clear right away, uh, but but a really really fun player, really really good stab, on, and a player you shouldn't leave uh, your draft without. So big D. In closing up shop here on this last little bit of the fourth round, what are your thoughts? You got anything? No, you know, not not directly. I think um, I think you summed it up pretty well. I'm sure there's a there's a couple names here that could come, you mm -hmm. know, that could pop up. Um, you know, I think uh, we were talking about the Colts situation. Anthony Gold um, or Gould, uh, yeah, there. Um, you know, there, there's there's some other players. Uh, Tyron, Tyron Tracy, Tracy to is the a, Giants is, is was a, a great a big one for spot. me. Yeah, great um, landing spot. And so, uh, so fifth round pick. So, you, but awesome receiver, and they have Singletary, and it's kind of that's it. Mm -hmm. And interesting weapon, great landing spot. You don't love the capital, but I, I agree 100 percent on that one. Yeah, but in years past, man, I've 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 really like second half of the fourth. I've really had a hard time. Like really, do, you know, there, there's a couple players that I like, right? But there's no one that I'm like, oh man, that's you know, I could see this, I could see a little bit more juiced up this yeah. year. It feels and and this just kind of tells me. I mean, you were talking about Washington. This is the four eleven pick. Like I'm, I'm excited about that 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 opportunity, that spot, and at the fourth round, it's like, right. you know, people give away. Um, you know, people give away fourth round like, uh, you know, like you're handing out an extra dish of uh, dish of candies uh, oh, on, sure. on Halloween. So, so you can pick up some of these fours. Um, before your rookie draft, especially if your rookie draft is later in, in the summer, early, early summer, um, late spring, you know, you could start moving around and getting some of these position players, especially with the people that maybe that aren't tuned in. If you're watching this right now, thank you. Subscribe, <laughs> hit it down. But, you know, if you're watching this and you, if you stay to the end, then obviously you you enjoy fantasy uh, football or you really enjoy Casey's voice. Either one, I applaud you. But <laughs> but point being is that you have the opportunity now as you see some of these coming out that there's some some spots there where you can trade some of your veterans some that you're not high on and i know we'll get into that later but there's there's spots there now where you can pick up some of these sure. some of these and you, and you, and you you know the drafts are going to shake out and the the further away we get from draft day the, the 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 firmer adp is but there's always those diamonds in the rough there's always that opportunity and so it's 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 going to be uh, it's going to be a great year for, for, for drafts. It'll be a fun year for rebuilds. Yeah. Um, it'll be a fun year for startups because there's just so much, um, 
uh, it feels like in and, and maybe I just have more rookie fever this year, but it just feels like there's more more juice this this year when it comes to some of the some of the high end and especially but also just some of that mid man I, I you know yeah, oh, opportunity yeah, yeah. perspective glass half full type of type of players it feels like there's more of those out there so yeah i agree I, I would wrap up with this don't let the staunch dickheads bully you off of taking the shots on those outliers don't let the liberal media the tell you like we have. how to think and feel it's just you know and, and we, we, look go, at, or? <laughs> we go about this every single year and you know if we you try to, have hate in your heart, let it out. We try to have fun with this, and it should be fun. Yeah, we're trying to put the fun back in fantasy off the rip. You know, how much time you got, buddy? That's what we're doing. <laughs> um, but I think sometimes what gets lost is like these guys are out here talking to you about all these percentages, and the percentage is like basically around a coin flip. It's a, and, and, it's a schmidge better and than what a coin those, flip. And what those percentages typically are the 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 guidelines for that is like one top 24 season and it's like yeah. hey yeah that's great but like you're you could sit around here and hit those singles all day long and 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 we know who the guys who are nine times out of ten gonna really smash but it's okay to just take some shots on some of those outliers because look right now like i believe i forget what the stat was but like four or five out of the top 10 of uh the fantasy wide receiver finishes last year were guys drafted in the fourth round. Yeah. I know that it's that it's you know not the cool thing, but yeah. it's okay to do your work, do the evaluations, and and take your swings on some of the quote unquote outliers because outliers can turn your team around and smash you into championships. There's a million ways to play the game, but it, but if you're always playing towards the mean, then you're always going to be mean, right? Like you're always going to be kind of in that mid, mid. to co- competitive and and and, and some, most of those analytical guys are mean. <laughs> and it, you know, but it, it's it's not a bad thing. It's just it. What you were saying is like take your shots. If you like, if you really like somebody, and they didn't quite get the draft capital, take you know. But and you're in between, and you and there's somebody else on the clock that you you don't necessarily like as much, but they they look a little bit higher. Don't be afraid to take those shots, man. I mean, I just think that it's it's um, too often we turn robotic, um, especially with analytics. It becomes very non personal. And it becomes very like black and white. And this game is not black and white. There's mm-hmm. so much substance. Yeah. There's so many layers to it that you're, you're you're allowed to make a mistake, and you learn from that mistake. Yeah. But you're also allowed Ooh. to think you made a mistake, and then all of a sudden, yeah. like look at the Rams, man. I mean, you got Puka, you've got Kyron um, last draft, right? And 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 obviously, oh, they've fit, crushed those. They, they crushed those late round five, things. Five six and, round and, picks. Yeah. Yeah. So. And you know, it, look, I'm, it's not. I'm not bashing. Uh, analytics are all a part of the puzzle. I I use them. Oh, I, yeah. I know yeah. them. I wanna I wanna live inside of them. But then I also want to do the film work and other things and find some of those outliers and not be scared to take uh, those shots on. You know, a Xavier Leggett. If I feel like I did the work and he's worth taking a shot on because there is some context there. So yeah. that's really all I'm saying. I'm not trying to bash the the analytical side of things. I don't care. Uh, but I did. Four of the top ten wide receivers were day three selections, and this was a uh, straight one hundred. The OG fantasy from Player Profiler, uh, a tweet from the him. OG. So I want to <laughs> give I want to give him the credit there. But Tyree Kill, wide receiver two, fifth round. Amon Ross, St. Brown, wide receiver third, uh, wide receiver three, fourth round. Puka Nakua, wide receiver four, fifth round. And Stephon Diggs, wide receiver nine, fifth round. That so, is a lack of draft capital right there. If I ever heard of it, it just, it can, it can work and it can happen. And, and there was, there's always points in times. Every, as long as I've been doing this, you can look at the top 12 receivers and there's always those middle round to later round guys who, who are up in there. When you look at the, the stat charts of, hits of green boxes and shit like that there's it's it's all it only tells you that the first and second round guys matter and and of course they matter a lot but some of these other guys that you can find can can turn things around and win you multiple championships so that's all we're going to say for now we're going to get the ff out of here we appreciate you guys we're going to have a ton of rookie content this is our first kind of look at it our first response to what we've seen we're going to get a lot deeper in the tradings and the hows and the what's and uh, we'll be hitting you with buys sells we'll get into the veteran side of this thing because that's really important yep. who won that rookies, who lost baby. that rookies come on we we'll, gotta hit them we'll be hammering rookies oh, for sure rookies. Uh, oh, we'll have austin. Is your draft starting tonight oh my god we'll have austin back uh in the fold here uh, on you know one of these shows here coming up we'll have snoo coming back we got jb coming back uh we got all sorts of uh fun guys 
to uh, join join the show and discuss their different points of view. Uh, but until then, keep it locked here. Hit us with a like, subscribe, and we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>